Hey there, J.M. Robinson, sixth graders. It's Mr. Ferris, and I'm gonna go over the lesson that we did today in the brass class, and the woodwinds are gonna do on Monday. Today's lesson is about music theory. So I want you to write that down. And music theory is the study of how to read music. So we're gonna learn how to read and write music today, okay? We're just gonna do the basics. So pause the video if you need to write that down. We're gonna go over the first thing, which is five lines and four spaces. Like your hand, five lines, four spaces. This is called a staff. And a staff has five lines and four spaces. And this is where all music occurs. It occurs on a staff, five lines and four spaces. So say it with me, a staff has five lines and four spaces. Do it again, staff has five lines, four spaces. One more time, staff has five lines, four spaces. So that's your staff and that's where all music is gonna be written. Next thing we have. I'm going to teach you how to draw this. We're going to do a straight line. The letter P and the number 6. Let's do that again. Straight line, letter P, number 6. Okay, 3 is my favorite number. That's why we're doing it three times. And this is called a treble clef. Treble clef. And a treble clef means you're going to play or sing high. So, treble clef, play or sing high. Do it again. Treble clef, play or sing high. And one more time. Treble clef, play or sing high. So that is your treble clef. All right, next thing we're gonna learn. You're gonna make a curly cue. Start here, curl around to your right and down and put two dots. I'll show you that again. Curl around to the right, put two dots. Right here, curl around, put two dots. This is called a bass clef. Make sure you say bass, not bass. It's not a fish, it's a bass clef. So if a treble clef is you're playing or singing high, then your bass clef is play or sing low. So bass clef, play or sing low. Bass clef, play or sing low. One more time. Bass clef, play or sing low. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to draw a staff again. Remember, staff has five lines and four spaces. And then we're gonna draw a vertical line through the staff. This line is called a bar line. Bar line, it separates music. And that's all a bar line does, it, it separates music. It's like a music organizer. Okay, so there's your bar line. You can pause the video if you need to write that down. We're gonna go on to the next thing. And we're gonna put a staff up. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two bar lines, one at the beginning and one at the end. And this space in between two bar lines is called a measure. Say measure. Measure. And it is the space between two bar lines. Measure, space between two bar lines. Pretty easy, right? So we got these two bar lines and the space that is in between them is called a measure. All right, next thing. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to write these things down, okay? All right, we're gonna do 
two lines and two dots. It's pretty easy, right? Those dots, I'm gonna make them a little thicker so you can see them on the video. This is called a repeat sign. You know what a repeat sign tells you to do? Do it again, and that's it. Or play it again. It's what I like to call a composer's lazy way of not having to write the music again. Repeat sign. Do it again, play it again. What? Repeat sign. Do it again, play it again. What? Repeat sign. Do it again, play it again. Easy, right? Awesome. We got one more thing, and then we're done with today's lesson. We're going to draw a staff again. But this time, we're not going to put a bar line over here. We're going to put two bar lines close to each other right here. And those two bar lines make a double bar line. And a double bar line tells us one thing. It's the end. So that was our lesson today in brass class. I'll be teaching that in woodwinds class on Monday. Hope you all have a great weekend. Watch this video again if you need to review stuff. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.